is it gonna let me do that uh oh i don't know if it's actually going now or not good morning good morning <laughs> We are live. I'm so excited to have the gorgeous Lorna Taylor with me. Thank you, Lorna, for joining me. So Lorna is my social media expert. She is going to be speaking at our event, Prosper Pest in Cambridge, which is coming around really, really quickly. And I'm super honoured that you will be joining us, Lorna. So thank you. You're going to be talking about creating a bigger impact online. Yes, I am. And I love the title for this permission to be seen because um, I can talk about the specifics of the features and the tools and, you know, add this and add that. But ultimately what holds a lot of people back from making a bigger impact online is, um, is their reluctance to be seen, I think, and be seen in the way that they are in real life. Um, I've had a lot of chats with um, my members and my clients recently, actually, that, you know, they I give them all of the tools. I give them all of the ideas, all of the prompts. I show them where everything is. Yet there's times when there's there's still something holding them back. And I feel like that permission to be seen exactly how you are, not with a filter, not when you've lost weight, not when you're more successful. Um, to be seen exactly where you are right now is the bit that that gets people stuck. <laughs> Absolutely, 100% agree with you. And I think we've all been there, right? <laughs> I can definitely relate to it. And, um, and I'm sure that you hear some excuses and you're like, is that really the reason? I, mm -hmm. I bet time is one of them, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yeah, probably one of the ones, right? Yeah, that's the big one. I haven't got time to post on social media. I'm like, okay, cool. How else are you going to market your business? How else are you going to find your people? Because you don't have to use social media. There's plenty of businesses out there that don't. Um, I just say, okay, but how else are you going to market your business? Have you thought about another avenue? Because you have to do something to share what you do with other people. And I do feel like social media is very accessible. It's a very easy way to reach people. Um, we all have phones. We all have, we're all on these platforms. It's an easy way in rather than some of the other ways, which I think are much harder, you know, getting PR and doing ads and things like that. I think they're much harder at the beginning. Social media to me is very, very accessible. Um, you do have to sort of get going with it. <laughs> yeah. And we do often overcomplicate it, don't we? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I like to think that I cut through some of the overwhelm and make it simpler. And I'm a big, I'm a big fan of like, just post it. I know it's not perfect. I know you could probably take another picture and film it again and rewrite this. And I, and I just really encourage people just to post it because the biggest, the biggest result that you'll get is the feedback from, okay, did anyone see it? Okay. Did people see it? Did people like it? Okay. Did people comment on it? Did people message me about it? Did it start a discussion? What are people saying about it? That feedback that you get from a post is so valuable and you won't get that if you are worrying too much about taking the picture 100 times and leaving it in your drafts until you feel ready. You won't ever feel ready. Take it out your drafts and post it because then you will know, you'll get the feedback of, oh, people liked this kind of video or, oh, you know, people enjoy talking about this topic with me. And that will spur you on. You'll feel more confident then to make more of that kind of content. Wow. <laughs> do you know what I mean? We could talk about this all day, couldn't we? Um, I love that. Though. I love that just do attitude and work on it. Because I think, you know, it really, it ties into the comparisonitis, right? Everyone, yeah. Well, they're further along and they look pretty and they've got the office. They've got the, as you say, like in shape or whatever it may be. Um, yeah. But actually everyone started somewhere and if you scroll back on some of those people oh it's messy I want yes. to say don't me though please don't <laughs> don't scroll back I, I like I like doing that I like going back and be like okay their aesthetic was different a year or two ago and it should be because we should be trying to improve and we should be trying to progress 
And I think it's a good thing. I look back at some of my old videos, I'm like, oh, that was awful. How did anyone want to work with me after that? But it shows progress. And I deliberately don't have, you know, a fancy aesthetic looking office. I don't I don't use filters. I'm sitting in front of a video, uh, uh, sitting in front of a window here because I think that's just more flattering. Um, I deliberately do that because I'm like, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. You think it's necessary. It's not. Even the biggest creators and business owners and whatnot, the reason why people love them is because of their relatability. It's not because they had a fancy brand shoot and now they've had their hair done and they look, you know, they're standing on stage. Yes, that's nice. But nine times out of 10, the reason that we follow them or the reason that we're so connected to their story is because of the stuff they share that's behind the scenes and the, the rough and ready stuff and the stuff that's not perfect. And anybody can, can share that stuff. That's accessible to all of us because that's how we all live our lives every single day. Yeah, it's our humanness, exactly. And I like that, the relatability is mm -hmm. absolutely. I also adore the, that you touched on the evolution because I believe that that's kind of what we, we're just here for, like on the, yeah, just with life generally. So I think um, if you can embrace that growth and um, enjoy the journey with it, then you are winning at life. Yeah, you are. And that's that's hard to do when you feel really passionate about what you're doing and you want it to be the best it possibly can. And I get that. I get that people are so um, have such a clear vision or they're really passionate or they're like, this is going to this is going to make me come across less professional, maybe. But I promise you the way that social media has moved in the last few years, um, that is not a barrier anymore. If anything, that is what's going to attract the people that are your vibe and on your level and the ones that you want to work with and collaborate with. So having that worry of, oh, it doesn't look, you know, my grid doesn't look nice and it's not in a pattern and I haven't got my professional photos and stuff. They're all just barriers. And it's almost like I'm going to give you permission today. I'm going to give you permission to just show up in the way that you are showing up in your home, in your office, whatever you're doing, whatever state you are in today normally is exactly the same way that you can appear online. Ah. <laughs> yes, 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 absolutely. I think, um, oh, God, there's so many things that I want to pull on, but um, not everyone's going to love you. Right. I think that it's all mindset. This is obviously. this is Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It is. It is. Because I can tell you the buttons to press and say this on your reel and whatnot. But it's the mindset behind it about why you don't want to press share, why you don't want to post it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And everyone's going to be different. Like, so the perfectionist. But if you can make that little shift um, to. I have that but because I know that there's more in me. That's brilliant. And I can take that and go and go and improve. Yeah. It's me a platform to bounce off and and work. In fact, I, I spoke to a lovely lady, um, Julie Kenny, who is also joining us at the event. And uh, she said, there's three speeches that you do when you're speaking. It's the one you plan, the one you do, and then the one uh, you think about afterwards. And I was like, that's just so spot on. Um, and if you can yeah. embrace that and know that, as you say, that's like the humanness in it, then that's great. But yeah, there's, there's so many different levels to this. But the one that I love the most that, that I want to pull in there is not everyone is going to love you. Not You don't want to be everyone's cup of tea when you can be some people's champagne. And that, I think, when it comes Ooh. to being... Oh, I love that. It is, not Pull that. Don't be everyone's cup of tea when you can be somebody's champagne. Exactly. But this is it, right? And, and you talk about this, don't you, with regard to numbers of followers and uh, you can get mm -hmm. up in that. But actually, would you rather have like 100 super fans or 10,000 people that are a bit meh? Yeah, know. I know. And the, num the numbers are so deceiving because, you know, in the in the early days and in the influencer world, 
literally more numbers means you can earn more, you can charge more for your services, you can charge more for posts. So I can understand where that whole thing of the more the bigger your audience, the more you money you can earn. Um, but for businesses, it doesn't work like that. And even for, you know, smaller creatives, it doesn't work like that. Um, there's no correlation between your audience size and how much you can charge. And I know some people that have a few hundred followers that are doing exceptional things in their business and it's not there's no correlation there um and also just because you've got a, a little audience on instagram doesn't mean you've got a, you know there's no correlation to where your people are they you could have a massive audience on linkedin you could have a massive email list it doesn't those numbers are not correlated to your success or your sales or your worth or anything like that and I think it's a narrative that's starting to change as people realize that it's all just sort of smoke and mirrors. Um, it used to be how it worked and it's not how it worked now. And I love that. I love that somebody could start an Instagram account today with a new idea and within hours they could find their people and there'd be nothing stopping them from messaging them and creating something new, working on something new. I, I absolutely love that. Absolutely. Me too. <laughs> me too. And I love how you touched on like not tying it into your worth because how many people do that? I, I yeah. And that, I, that's half of the the mental health issues that you know that are surrounding social media because there is that people do make that link between, you know, people loving me online and oh, I must, you know, I must get more love online because that means that I'm somehow worth more. And if I don't have it, I'm worth less. I feel like it stems from that, but I would like to think that that is changing as an industry and um, we don't give those numbers so much power. Mm. It's a whole awareness and that can that can also show up in how much we're earning and all sorts of things. People tie that into whether they are worthy and enough just as they are. And uh, I think particularly as women you know especially as mums there is that whole um that significance and bringing that contribution into the household and I mean I know that's a totally different subject but <laughs> I just that is so true and it is a conversation that needs to be had um so yeah bringing awareness to that is is really really powerful so um so what uh other barriers do you think that come up for your clients um Another big one is, especially if people are fairly new to their business, um, a big one is not wanting to post anything in case friends or family have some kind of judgment about it. Um, I, I felt this as well. I don't post a lot on Facebook because I know lots of my old work people are on there and my dad is on there and stupid things like that. Um, but the the shift that you need to make is that your business is not for them your business is not trying to attract those people yes it'd be lovely if they support you and sometimes they will and sometimes they won't but you're what you're trying to do to grow your business and reach your people it's not for them and so in the early days if it's necessary you know take them out of your group block them mute them don't you know don't have them as a follower you can remove people from your audience if you want to um because your content is not for them so if you feel weird that they're gonna see it and that's gonna that's the barrier to you not posting anything you can post it in places where those people aren't or you can take those people out of those places yes <laughs> <laughs> yes oh gosh yeah it's not for them exactly and again you start business and their lack of support a lot of people can t interpret as meaning something um the amount of times I have conversations with friends oh yeah you looks like you're doing amazing things I'm like well where are you <laughs> well, you, but, didn't the video then. you didn't comment on it or anything <laughs> um early days I definitely felt that um yeah. It's, yeah it's a mindset thing at the beginning because you 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 know, you, you put it out there and you're you're hoping, you know, you're really pushing yourself to put something new out there and potentially vulnerable. And then, you know, you're worried then of other people's judgments and not even strangers. Like I'm much less worried about strangers than I am from a girl that I used to work with. 
I don't know what it is, but I'd rather she didn't see it. I don't mind strangers seeing it, but I'd rather she didn't see it. Isn't that a weird way of thinking about things? But the, the way that I've tried to do it is to kind of mute them on Facebook. If they've started following me on Instagram, I take them out of my audience. I just try and not have them there so that I don't, it doesn't then become a block for the people that I'm trying to find. Really <laughs> I don't know when you said your dad's on there. It's like, I'm such a daddy's girl. <laughs> <laughs> as well so like he's so supportive and he's like trying to comment on stuff and I'm like oh dad this isn't this I love you but this isn't helping <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah I yeah absolutely my <laughs> like that my dad's actually not on Facebook thankfully but my mum is um so I do I do get that she's not on Instagram she, she keeps threatening <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah you know it works all sorts of ways and as you say that there is that real powerful shift that you can have when you realize you're not showing up for them and that you your people need you to show up right that mm. your people need you exactly where you are doing exactly what you're doing showing up exactly how you show up right now and that is a massive massive shift and obviously something we'll dive into. I've got a masterclass all around permission happening on Wednesday where we dive much more into the why we want to give ourselves permission. And of course, if you want to dive more into the how, you can go and to Lawn as well. So your doors are open, right, for your membership this week? Yeah, so I run a content creation membership for business owners to kind of cut through all the overwhelm and, and make it much, much simpler for you to be able to create your own content on a platform like Instagram. Um, I've been running it for two years, um, but this week it is open for new members. Um, so yeah, if you are someone that wants some of the how, some of the logistics of like, how okay, this is a, this is a cool idea, or I want to do this, but how do I actually do it? that's where I come in and you can join us on a weekly basis. We will come together and create the content and plan our ideas and things together um, so that you are able to do it all by yourself, but in uh, an easy and fun way. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to show up on social media. I want to be seen. Let's make this easy, simple, effective. Yes. And the teacher in me does kind of go, right, okay, well, we spent this session creating the content. Um, now I want you to post it. And they all go, oh, but it's not ready yet. And I'm like, no, I want to see it now. You need to post it. It's not perfect. We're going to do it because you need to crack on with other things. So I, the teacher in me kind of makes them <laughs> makes them do it because we know otherwise that those people will keep it in their drafts and not post it or keep it on the plan. And we, you know, I want to encourage you to share things because it's that feedback that we want. And the more we do it, the more confident and competent we feel about doing it. Yeah. And you're also subconsciously saying to yourself that I'm committed, like I'm doing this thing. <laughs> and that in itself is really powerful. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Um, and also on another note we are doing our final giveaway for Prosper Fest Prosper Fest even uh, Cambridge and it is Lorna's impact on Instagram course the three part yeah. course to get more yeah. now can I remember confidence clarity and impact <laughs> and that's it isn't it <laughs> um, yes the, the complete like do it yourself course three parts um covers uh strategy creation engagement so if you are someone that just wants like the info they can work through it themselves they'll be perfect for you which is an amazing giveaway so to be in with a chance to win that you need to get your ticket this week if you haven't already and follow us share on the stories and then we will notify the winner next week. So that's very exciting. It's coming up really, really soon. But yeah, I'm so excited to see you in person, Lorna, because we've only connected online, haven't we? No. And everyone always says to me when they meet me online, you're so much taller than I thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. So, prepare yourselves for me being tall. But yes, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be capturing some content um, for the day as well, for the event. And then I'm also going to be sharing some tips as a speaker as well um so yeah you've got the full me for the day all of my skill set <laughs> that is absolutely right because um a lot of these skills and um concepts actually can take in person as well right yeah absolutely and um 
I seem to have discovered a superpower of like talking to people and, and sharing things and speaking um, that I didn't know I was so good at. I mean, I've got the teacher experience in me, um, but finding something that I'm quite passionate about um, and then putting me on a stage, I just seem to sort of, yeah, I'm in the flow. So I'm really yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah, so there's a couple of other of Lorna's services there. So she does help you capture your own content as well. And of course, guest speaker. Um, yeah, hit her up because she's a fountain of knowledge. And I just love how, as you say, you've got that skill of communicating your what you do, but also you keep it in a, such a simple way that people can grasp it and go and take action now, which... Um, in a world where we are, we do have access to so much information. We do have lots of people giving different mm. ideas and opinions that actually sometimes that's just what you need, right? It's just that, that do this, do this, do this, go. Yeah, I think I'm used to talking to five year olds. So I'm trying to, <laughs> <laughs> to break my <down. laughs> It works. Whatever it, works. it is, it works. So, yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, and as I said, we will, well, go hit Lorna up, go and get into her world. It's amazing. I love seeing Lorna's stuff and what she's up to. And come and join me for the permission granted masterclass on Wednesday, 1030. If you want the link, drop a comment below. And obviously I'll share all Lorna's details and the giveaway, all of the stuff. And come and see us in person at Prosper. That'd be amazing. Thanks, Lorna. Oh, thank you so much, Marie. Take care. Bye. Bye.